This is the final video of this module. We're gonna have many more modules, but for this video, we're ending it with uh, with this video. And in this video, we're gonna have a lesson that is probably the most difficult to understand from the entire module. Because in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about model evaluation and model validation. Now, in terms of AI and machine learning, it's very easy to build uh, AI model. It's very difficult to validate that the model performs according to the specifications that they were set for that specific model. So expect this to be a, a difficult lesson, uh, caution advised, uh, but it's only going to be like five minutes. So how difficult can it be? Just stick to the five minutes and uh, you, you, I'm sure you'll manage. Um, actually i think quite a few of you you would uh, you won't last until the end of this video so this is a good time for me to give you my heart sell that it's a brand new channel and i need subscribers if you're interested in this kind of content please click subscribe i have three subscribers i need 1000 and then youtube will monetize me now having taken that out of the way let's start with the technical part in the very first few minutes, we're just going to be talking uh, an overview of the evaluation and the validation process. This is the easy part. After this, it gets the difficult part. But how do we evaluate models and how do we validate that they perform? Well, first, we do something called data splitting when we split uh, the data into training and testing sets. And this is required for the next steps. Then is the training phase when we train the model based on the part of the training set that we have. Then we evaluate the model uh, using the training data set, uh, the, the, the split part from the training data set. And then we measure some kind of a performance metrics that we have. And we're going to go through many of those in the next few minutes. Then we evaluate the model. We cross evaluate if, if possible. We're doing hyperparameter turning, tuning. We adjust the hyperparameters and we get the final model. That is the easy part uh, of how usually this is explained. Now, let's look at this in a more complicated way. Let's look at the model evaluation techniques that they are used for, for this part, for the model evaluation. Here, for this part, I have selected uh, seven different model evaluation techniques although some people they would say there is more uh, i think this is more than enough the first evaluation technique which is probably also the simplest let me expand this because it's going to get difficult now there we are the first is the confusion metrics so the confusion metrics is a, a simple table that's used to show the accuracy of a classification model uh, the classification model is a model that predicts categories. And in this confusion model, um, it compares the model with predictions from the actual outcomes. And the, the table usually has four types of outcomes. Uh, three, four. The first one is true positives. And true positives is where the model correctly predicted the positive class. The second in this uh, confusion matrix evaluation is the true negatives. And the true negatives is where the, codo, the model correctly predicted the negative class. The third is false positives. And this is also known as type 1 error, uh, where the model incorrectly predicted the positive class. And uh, the, the fourth is the false negatives, also known as type 2 error. Uh, be, this is where the model incorrectly predicted the negative class. So this is the, the first out of the seven that we have listed for this. So the, the second evaluation technique is accuracy. It's just accuracy. This measures how the model is correct. It's calculated by adding the true positives, the correct positive prediction, and the true negatives, uh, the correct negative predictions, and then dividing by the total number of predictions. So that's the, the second uh, approach, second model for evaluation. The third model for evaluation, <clears throat> it's called precision and recall, where by precision, uh, we mean that the measures, uh, precision just measures how 
accurate is the model positive predictions uh, or in other words when the predict when when it predicts the positive class how often is this correct so that's a it's a question that wants an answer and the second is the recall with the recall um, this measures how good the model is at detecting the positive class out of any actual positive instances so how many could the model correctly identify so this is another question for the model the fourth approach is uh, F1 score. And F1 score is a number between 0 and 1 that combines precision and recall into a single metric. This is a, a harmonic mean, a, a kind of average of the precision and recall. A higher uh, F1 score means the model has a good balance uh, between precision and, and recall. The fifth model is uh, this one is uh, the receiver operational characteristic is known as uh, rock rock curve so rock curve is one out of two in in this and the second one is uh, area under control uh, under the control uh, area under the curve Area under the curve, yes. So rock curve and area under the curve. Rock receiver operational characteristic. Rock is um, a graph showing the performance of a classification model at the classification threshold. So it plots two parameters: uh, the the true positive rate and uh, also the, which is also known as the recall and the false positive rate. And the oak is, this measures the entire area under the rock curve. So a higher oak value means that the model is better at distinguishing the positives and the negative classes. The sixth model is the mean absolute error and the mean square error. The mean absolute error measures the average magnitude of errors. In a, in a set of predictions, this considering their direction. Uh, it's, it's an average of the absolute difference between the predicted values and the actual values. And the mean square error, it, this measures the average of the squares of the error. And that is the average square difference between the estimated values and the actual values. So it gives more weight to the, to the actual errors. The seventh and the last one in the evaluation techniques is cross-validation. And we use the same term for in the validation techniques, but this is, we refer here to the evaluation part. This is a technique for evaluating how a model can perform on unseen data. Uh, it involves dividing the data sets into several smaller data sets and then using some of those for training and some of those for validating the model. Uh, it, it helps ensure that the model is general and performs well on different data sets. Now, we're moving to the validation techniques. And in the validation techniques, there are, I, I can think of four different uh, models techniques. First is the chain test split. This is a, a method of evaluating the performance of a model where the data is split into two parts, the training set and the testing set. So the model is trained on the training set and then tested on the testing set to see how well it performed. And this is already, uh, we discussed this in the evaluation and at the beginning. So that's the easiest method. Second is the cross-validation which is also something we spoke already. And it's similar to the first one. In this one, we instead of having a single split, the data is divided into multiple times into different training and testing uh, data sets. And this method provides a more detailed way of assessing the model performance. Third is the bootstrap method. Boot. The bootstrap method is, um, involves randomly selecting a subset of data from the dataset with 
uh, replacement. So multiple times and evaluating the model on each subset. So this helps understanding how this helps us understand how the changes in the data might affect the model performance. And the fourth one, the fourth one is um, validation in the time series data. So, and this is a, a special method when dealing with time series data, when time, when data is collected over time. Like, for example, stock prices. Uh, the main idea here is that you have to ensure that the model is tested on the data from a later time uh, than it was trained on. So, if you're training the 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 model on data from uh, time year one or time period one, you have to test it on time period two. The, the testing has to be in the future. And because you want to see if the model can make future pre predictions. There's no point if you're looking at stock market value, there's no point uh, using the future data for, for past performance. You want to predict how the share value is going to evolve in the future. And this is how you train. You never use, uh, you, you never test the model on, on data from the past. You always test the model on the data from the future. Now to end this interesting session, uh, we need to consider two things in the final model. First is the model interoperability and explainability. And there's a lot of effort going into this direction. This is about making it clear how and why the model makes decisions. It's, it's very important to ensure that the model decisions can be trusted and understood, especially when those decisions have significant consequences. And the second is bias and fairness. And this involves checking and ensuring that the model is fair and does not produce biased results. For instance, it should not make predictions that they are unfairly prejudiced, uh, prejudiced against certain groups of people. And there's a lot of movement going into this area that the future AI need to be transparent, need to be explainable, need to be visible. But with this, we are closing the module on overview of artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms in uh, cybersecurity. Just one final note before we end this session that uh, the, the, the channel is fairly new. We only have three subscribers, so we need more people to subscribe just to motivate me to keep doing these videos. We have, this is the, I have separate, I have separated each video into lessons. So we have lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, and this is going to be the lesson five, which I'm going to upload right now and this will conclude the first module then i'm going to build the second module in this channel i'm going to be talking mostly about ai security but i also have a second channel which is on blockchain and cryptocurrencies so here i'm looking at tokenless projects um, projects in the crypto markets that they haven't announced their tokens yet and usually if you use those they give you free tokens for being early users and there's quite a lot of uh, money to be made over there um, i have never made any money over there but some people have or at least they claim that they have so here i'm showing people how to use those new uh, projects uh, i hope you enjoyed the module and i hope you'll be back for the second module